Ace Team and here doing the junkyard crawl with a twist. This is the big Olds barn. Get it? It's an old barn, but it's full of Oldsmobiles. We're in Palmer, Massachusetts, and we'll take a break from Burns and Auto Reckon for a couple of days to explore the cool Oldsmobile products in that barn. Everyone loves a barn find. Let's dig in. This is our fifth video in this series on the old red barn, the old red barn with the Oldsmobiles in it. Now we've been upstairs. This is the downstairs. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff we can scope out. Before we go in, let's have a look in this corner right here. And this gives us a nice opportunity to look at family styling in various vehicles. Uh, in this case, Oldsmobile, right? This fender right here, it's an old. 98, you can see right there, Olds 98. This is on the top of the line, rear-wheel drive uh, family, Oldsmobile, big car, generally four doors, but notice the very firm wheel arch here and the shape this is kind of rounded off. Now that family styling was also used on the Toro Nando fender. We can see right here, very similar bold arch, much more of a crown here. Again, the Toro Nando was front wheel drive, had a wider front track and a more slimmed off uh, tumble home to the body. So again, the family styling from 98 to Toronado scene to keep people understanding. That's an old coming down the road. Beyond that, here's old Toronado fenders about 1969, 70. Then they went from a rounded to a squared off look. And yeah, this same basic vibe was continued into the smaller Oldsmobiles too. So again, both Toronado fenders, but here's 66, 7, 8, and then 69 onward right here. But again, let's go inside the barn now. You gotta love this. Look at this silo. This is a prefab concrete silo. You'd stack these things up one at a time. These steel bars would go on, you'd crank them down. You and your buddies would build your own silo in a weekend. Kind of cool. Okay, this is really dream territory right here. Um, this looks to be a 1959 Oldsmobile. It's a convertible. Uh, we got to dig in on this thing. Uh, let's go to this side first. And look at the styling, 1959, just over styled. You know, some, some people said that, you know, GM styling was at the height of its decline in 1959, pun intended and rhyme intended. But look at this, one, two emblems and, and three rocket boosters for the reverse lights and just massive chrome on these things, all these hard shapes and forms. And some would say that how do they torture a sheet of metal that once began so pure and flat into a form like that. But if you ask me, this is astonishing one year only design stuff. And in the Oldsmobile is selling hundreds of thousands of cars every year. So it paid to make them look different. In fact, the tooling cost was nothing compared to the profits of building cars that look different from year to year. Um, and inside of this one here, this again is a convertible. Yeah, I don't wanna, okay, yeah, look at this. Bench seat, uh, we can see this one here, who was born in automatic, as most of these were by this point in time. And um, I'll come around to that. Yeah, just beautiful, the original, the deep steering wheel. No seat belts in these cars. I believe you could order them, but they were not standard, which is a little spooky. This steering wheel right here, not so friendly to your face if you hit a tree or something like that, long before Uncle Sam mandated airbags. But here's Car Life magazine right here. And here is, this is what the special edition issue here, all the new cars for 1959. And here's the olds right there. And we can see those unusually widely spaced headlights, which again, uh, have the marker light in the middle and very strange stuff. We see it right here. Here's the olds grill. And again, the headlights are like almost a foot apart. Very strange, but there it is. And then inside here, there's a hole right up on the olds mobile. Try and find it here. Yeah, Oldsmobile for 59. There it is right there. The Super 88, the hard top, the first bubble top. There it is. And again, the uh, 59 Oldsmobile, like the 59 Chevy, was a whole start from scratch design. Brand new bodies. The 59 bodies are brand new and much lower. And so the whole rundown, they tell us all about the Olds. And the frame was also unique. And you can see right there, it's an X and a perimeter. And of course, uh, the body would bolt down to the top of that. But again, the convertible, always the strangest, rarest. And again, 1959 was the year that the 371 grew to 394 cubes. Let's take a peek and see if it's still here. Uh, yeah, there it is. It's a little dark in here. I don't know if you can see this well, Super Shane. 
But uh, there it is. This is the first year, 394 with a four barrel carburetor. I don't think J2 triple carbs came into the 394 era. I think that was 57, 58 only. But with that said, 394 four barrel, something like 320 horsepower, uh, 400 plus foot pounds of torque. And the party gets even better. Here is a 1961 Oldsmobile convertible, yet another one. And again, we can see that every single year styling got totally different. Similar themes in terms of sort of the in sides, all this stainless steel, big drum brakes on the front. No disc brakes in Oldsmobile land for another few years, but there's that massive 11-inch drum with the big hat, that built-in uh, fin. That basically goes out into the airstream behind the 14-inch wheel and dissipates heat into the air. And this here is automobile, collectible automobile magazine right here. And this is December of 1996 with the, uh, the slimmer trimmer Oldsmobiles of 61 through 64. They got away from the bloat of the 50s. And then here's the story of those cars. And we can see right here, kind of a very pretty car. And that again is a 1961, I believe. But here are some of the uh, stops along the way. Look at these things right here. Crazy looking clays right there from the old styling studios. And uh, a lot of the cars along the way that uh, were considered but never made production. On the right hand side, there's a convertible. And let's get back to the one we're looking at here. Now the convertible was available in the 88 and the 98 families. The 88 was smaller, same platform, but a shorter wheelbase. 98 was the big dog. And this one here, 98. So here's the top tier Oldsmobile convertible for the model year, 61. Uh, this one, of course, convertible, there it is right there. I think 3,200 of these things are made out of 35,098, so like, I don't know, one in a hundred, I guess. My math is good on that thing. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, they're a pretty rare body style right here, but something interesting. Look at this. The rear side window has some telling stickers. It says here, Schaefer, they make clutches. Weber, they make flywheels. Johns makes pistons. And Hurst makes four-speed shifters. These are stickers that have been on here for a long, long time. And of course, we have genuine Oldsmobile parts. We know, of course, that Warren D was an Olds mechanic for many years. These are his personal cars. And by the way, these are all for sale. If you have an interest in buying anything you see in these videos uh, at the big Olds barn, you can uh, check it out. Uh, go with uh, Mike D's email address. Contact him. Make a deal. I'm staying out of the middle. But these things are all available. OK, going back inside this thing it is pretty dark but we'll see something on the transmission hump light yup somebody cut a hole in the floor of this thing to mount a four-speed manual transmission now keep in mind old did not offer a four-speed manual in 1961 but with that said no law says you can't make a hot rod and you can tell definitely somebody made this into a four-speed full-sized fun machine and you gotta love these day two stickers right there, right from 1960s, early 60s. And of course, George Hurst right there. Before he made his fortunes in shifters, he sold some of the first uh, V8 hot rod, um, or Volkswagen hop-up pieces and bumper guards and, and shifters for Volkswagen Beetles and buses. And of course, from there found his fortunes in uh, American muscle car, uh, four-speed goodies, as the four-speed became a big thing in the 1960s. Four on the floor was the, the thing to have in a muscle car. So here we have a couple of full-size Oldsmobile convertibles. And again, rag tops, uh, when the top goes down, the price goes up, I have to say. And in yesterday's video, you might have seen it, a 1957 Oldsmobile J2 convertible three-speed manual car. And again, these are all for sale if you care. Uh, I'm more about studying these things, but if you go to, uh, uh, to uh, Mike D's email address in this video, you can call him or contact him and find out more if you want to. And as we wrap this up, we'll just take a couple of looks at what's here just laying around here. And Mr. D was a total hardcore Olds guy. This is an Oldsmobile rear axle 57 up, massive structure right there. Again, this dwarfs the Chevy rear axle of the Fine King 57, 58. This is the one you want. And again, Buick Olds Pontiac, where big cars had bigger rear axles. Here is an Oldsmobile V8. Again, this is a pre-54, I would say, with the extended bell housing right there. Two-barrel carb, just a basic one, nothing major here. But here are the rocker arms and, of course, the push rods that made the Olds overhead valve V8 engine of 1949, one of the, the leading engines. This in the Cadillac of 49, same thing. And look at this, the Beehive valve springs. A lot of guys think that the LS1 Chevy was the first one. Nope, they had them here in the, in the early 50s in the Oldsmobile V8. 
eight. And finally, you know, you gotta love the Toronado, which of course is the front wheel drive, 66 onward. And this is an Oldsmobile 425 out of a Toronado. How do you know that? Well, the oil pan has this indent right here, which is where the drive shaft would go on the front wheel drive setup. In fact, let's take a quick walk before we wrap this video up right over here. And we'll actually see the uh, Turbo 425 front wheel drive hydromatic that would have been coupled to that 425. And here it is is right here. And what this basically is, it's a turbo 400 with a little extra torque, the turbo 425 capacity. Engine goes here and the transmission, there's a chain underneath this that then sends power through the front half shafts. And again, right down here, it's actually, there's a differential would go right here. That would go under the oil pan, thus the recess in the Toronado specific oil pan. And the beauty of that oil pan is it, it, it takes another quart of oil. So guys with 442s and other old muscle cars dig those Toronado oil pans. But here's what it was really meant for, the front wheel drive Toronado. Now, if you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up, uh, give us a like, share it with your friends, and by all means, hit the bell so you're aware of when the next video hits, which is tomorrow morning. Keep in mind, everything here is for sale. So you can reach out to uh, Mike D, the owner of these things, at the email address in the video.